Oh, welcome to Kids Corner. It wasn't so nice out this morning, so Sir Winston and I were looking at some family photo albums. We were looking at the pictures of my dad's 65th birthday party, and he wondered why there seemed to be two of my dad's in the photo. You see, my father is an identical twin. That means that he and his brother were born at the same time look very, very much alike. When they were little, people had a hard time telling them apart. In fact, in some of the family photos, we can get agreement of which one is dead and which one is Lawrence, but there's some pictures we're just not sure. I could always tell them apart, but there were some people that couldn't, including at the 65th birthday party, when there were people that asked me, tell me which one's your father, so I wish the right one a happy birthday. My mother was going to suggest that they could change their shirts in the middle to see if anybody would know the difference. You know, one time they did play a trick when they were little at school that they switched places and eventually the teacher caught on and she said, why did you do it? because our aunt told us to. Now, we're going to have Mark tell us a story about a set of twins from the Bible. They weren't identical, like Dad and Lawrence, but they also switched places, but with much different consequences. The story of Jacob stealing Esau's blessing, based on Genesis chapter 27, verses 1 to 41. When Esau and Jacob, the twin sons of Isaac, were young, Esau had sold his firstborn son's birthright to Jacob for food. The firstborn son's birthright was the extra inheritance of authority and goods that went to the firstborn son. As Isaac grew old, he gradually lost his sight. And one day he called Esau, his eldest son, to him and said, My son, I am now an old man and could die at any time. Go and get your hunting gear, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like, and bring it to me so that I may give you my blessing before I die. A father's blessing was an important event, as it combined what inheritance the son would get, and prophecy about the son's future. Isaac could override Esau's loss of birthright in his blessing. So Esau gathered his hunting gear and went out into the open country, but did not know that Rebekah, his mother, had overheard them. Rebekah hurried to Jacob and told him that she had heard Isaac tell Esau that he was going to give him his blessing. She then told Jacob to go and get two young goats so they could prepare food for Isaac and Jacob could receive the blessing. But Jacob was worried that Isaac would know he was not Esau. For Esau was very hairy, and Jacob had very smooth skin. If he was caught tricking his father, he would likely get a curse, not a blessing. Rebecca said, Do not worry. If there is a curse, let it fall on me, who am old. So Jacob went and got two young goats, and they cooked a tasty wild meal for Isaac. Then Rebecca dressed Jacob in some of Esau's clothes and covered his neck and arms with goatskin. Jacob went to Isaac and said, My father. Isaac replied, Yes, my son. Who is it? Jacob said, It is I, Esau, your firstborn son. I have done what you told me to do. Sit up and eat some of my game so you can give me your blessing. Isaac said, How did you find game so quickly? And Jacob replied, The Lord your God gave me success. So Isaac told Jacob to come close to him, for he said, Your voice is that of Jacob. Let me touch you so that I can be sure you are Esau. And he touched him, and since Jacob's arms were covered with goatskin, Isaac was deceived. Isaac said once more, Are you really Esau? Jacob replied, I am. Then Isaac had him bring him the food and kiss him. When Isaac smelled Esau's clothes on Jacob, he was convinced. And so he blessed him, saying, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of heaven's dew and of earth's richness, 
and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. Then Jacob left. In the meantime, Esau had been lucky hunting, and had prepared the meat just as Isaac liked it. He came to Isaac shortly after Jacob had left and said, My father, sit up and eat some of the game I have prepared for you, so you may give me your blessing. Isaac was confused and said, Who are you? Esau replied, I am Esau, your firstborn son. Isaac was distressed and cried out, Then who was it that just brought me game, that I ate just now? Who is it that I have already blessed? For he will be blessed. Esau was also distressed and said, My father, can you not bless me as well? Isaac replied, It must have been your brother Jacob who came and deceived me. He has taken your blessing. Esau said, He is rightly named Jacob, the deceiver, for now he has deceived me twice, once taking my birthright and now my blessing. Have you not any blessing for me? Isaac said, I have made him lord over you and made all his relatives his servants, and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. What can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau wept aloud and begged for at least one blessing. Isaac responded, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. So Esau held a grudge against Jacob and said to himself, When our father has died, then I will have my revenge on my brother. So what did you think of that story? You know... A little bit of background, when Esau and Jacob's mother was pregnant with them, she was told in a dream that the younger son, who was Jacob, would turn out to serve the older son. And I don't know if that was some way of making it happen, but there were a lot of consequences to it. Esau was very, very angry, and for his safety, Jacob had to leave and go to a foreign land, and he didn't come back until well after his mother died. But you know, it tells us that God can use people who may not be the oldest, the strongest, or the best behaved to help him accomplish his plan for the world. And that gives us something to think about. Shall we have a little prayer? If you could bow your head and repeat after me. Loving God, thank you for being here with me. Help me to be kind. Help me to look after your world. Help me to do your plans. Amen. And we'll see you next time at Kids Corner.